Hi, and welcome to Allen High School's discussion of solutions at the 10th grade pre-AP chemistry level. It's a little bit of a rainy, gloomy day out today, and I really enjoy a nice cup of hot tea to warm me from the inside out. We've talked about solutions from a qualitative sense. If I have sugar, we have OH groups that are polar, and those hydroxide groups can interact with the water and dissolve in the water. We want to move into the question of how much? How much sugar can I put in my tea? Would it be unsaturated, in which case it could take more sugar? Would it be saturated, or is there a way I could make it super saturated? If I made it really saturated while it was hot and then cooled it down, how much sugar would precipitate out into the bottom of my cup? Those are some of the questions that we're going to answer as we take a look at our solubility curves. Now, in a solubility curve, what we're trying to do is show how much of a solute, how much of an ionic solute in particular, uh, most of these are for ionic solutes, will dissolve in water. But we have to include two key components if we're going to talk about how much will dissolve in the water. One is, how much water are we talking about? I mean, I have a nice big cup of tea right here, um, but I have an even bigger cup that I bought from England. Obviously, I'm going to get a lot more sugar in that great big cup. So we have to specify either some amount of solvent or some amount of total solution. And if you notice on your y-axis here, we're talking about comparing for this left-hand curve here per 100 grams of water. All right. Now, we also have to talk about temperature. We know that we can get more sugar to dissolve at a higher temperature than we can at a lower temperature. Um, so those are the curves that we're going to be inter interpreting here. Now, if you take a look at these curves, you'll notice that all of the, uh, most, not all, but most of the ionic solids increase in solubility as I increase my temperature, some more than others. I mean, look at potassium nitrate. It shoots way up. It's highly soluble in water. If we look at sodium chloride, table salt, it doesn't change very much. It goes up from about, I don't know, 37 grams per 100 grams to 40 grams per 100 grams, not very much. If you look here, you see that we even have one salt that decreases its solubility in water as temperature increases. That's rather unusual. Well, how about gases, gas solutes? Well, on this chart, we have one, we have ammonia, and you notice, as we mentioned before, as you de increase temperature, you decrease the solubility. Right Now, this is another graph for gases. We have not talked much about those units yet, so I'm going to ignore the units and just talk about the trend. As we increase temperature, we decrease the solubility of gases, part of why sodas go flat, because as you increase the temperature, you decrease the solubility, and we play with a chemical reaction that's going on. Remember, I told you we simplified that. All right, so that answers for us 12, 14, and 15. So let's go on and see how we interpret these graphs. Many of you can do this on your own because you're very good at graphical interpretation. But um, for those of you who just need a push in the right direction, let's evaluate these in a little bit more detail. Now, we have our lines. If we are directly on the line, Let's talk about sodium nitrate because it's got a, a nice slope there. If you are on the line, anywhere on this line is saturated at that temperature. I'm just going to use SAT apostrophe D for saturated. So on the line represents a saturated solution. So any place below this line, so everything below the line for sodium nitrate, you have to be looking at a particular salt. Anything below the line would represent less solute than is possible, and that would be an unsaturated solution. And then anything above the line would be that 
really unstable, super saturated situation. Super means above, so super saturated. And we're going to be um, hopefully seeing that at least in a YouTube video, if not a little lab. So those are the regions. So if we looked, for example, at ammonium chloride above this line is super saturated, on the line is saturated, and below the line is unsaturated. Okay. Now, evidence that you have saturated a solution is if, if you've got, and this is how I used to do with my tea a lot when I was a little girl, I'd make my iced tea, and if I had, as long as I had a little bit of sugar at the bottom, I knew that was my evidence for my claim that I had a saturated solution. Okay, so let's go on and take a look at the analysis. I'm not going to do every one of these questions for you. I'm just going to take um, a variety of them and see what we can come up with here. All right, so, all right, there we go. All right, now, problems using the amount. There is a problem worked out for you here. I'm going to leave it mostly for your reference, but let me just point out one of the things that we'll be doing is, what if I had a bigger cup of tea? What if I had more than 100 grams of water? 100 grams of water, 100 mLs, that's not a lot. Um, certainly if it's not iced tea, you probably want more than that. And all we have to do is set up a proportionality, right? So if you could get 15 grams, so if you go over to the line, if you go to 40 degrees here, start at 40, go up to the potassium chlorate, go over into the concentration to the grams, it's roughly 15, 18, we're estimating that last digit, so we're saying 15. So if 15 will go into 100, how much will go into 550? it's going to be considered a linear relationship. So we can set up a proportionality and you'd get about 80, I'd prefer 83 for that than 82.5. All right, so that's the idea of what we're going to be doing. Some of them are going to be slightly more challenging than that, but not much. So let's look at some of these examples. All right, are the following solutions saturated, unsaturated, or super saturated? So first thing you want to do when you're doing, when you're working problems like this is make sure you pick the right salt. It's really easy to, to, you know, grab the wrong salt and go to the incorrect line. So there's my potassium chloride. I'm at 80 degrees. So if I go up, if I graph 40 grams of KCl at 80 degrees, so I'm at 80 degrees, I'm going to go up to 40 grams. That's that point right here, you notice that it's below the line. Since it's below the line, we have an unsaturated solution, which means I can add some more KCl. All right, let's take a look at the KNO3. So I've got 120 grams at 60 degrees. Now, I know in this case, this is present in the greatest amount, and that might make you tempted to call that the solvent, but we never do. If we're talking about the solubility of salts in water, water is always the solvent. Remember, we called it the universal solvent. All right, so we go up to 100 grams. We're going to go over to the KNO3, and we're going to go to 60 degrees. So it's that data point right there, and we're wondering what kind of solution of KNO3 is. So it's 60 degrees. We are above the saturation line. If we're above the saturation line, we have a super saturated solution. Now that's not very stable and that will precipitate out very, very readily if we just add a crystal or disturb it. Okay, how about 80 grams of sodium nitrate? So 80 grams of sodium nitrate, we're at 10 degrees. I'm going to go up to 80 grams. We are right on the line. If you're right on the line, it's a saturated solution, all right? Okay, so now let's ask, answer a few other qualitative questions. Which salt is the least soluble at 10 degrees? 
Well, I'll start at 10 degrees and I'm going to hit go to the first salt I hit. KClO3 will only dissolve about 5 grams. All the other salts are higher. So my answer to this is KClO3, potassium chlorate. Which salt shown has the greatest, read carefully now, increase in solubility? All right. So I'm going to bracket it off from 30. Let me get the highlighter here. And I want to bracket off at the 30. So there's the 30 degrees. We're looking between 30 degrees and 60 degrees. The one that has the biggest slope is going to be the one that has the greatest increase. So of all the salts in here between this range, the biggest slope is potassium nitrate. It goes from 100 to, down to 45, so from 45 to 100. So the largest increase was KNO3, which has the least change via temperature. This I want to have the smallest slope. It says least change. So I don't want a negative slope. I don't want a positive slope. Ideally, I want no slope at all. And that would be my sodium chloride, which is right here, with almost no increase at all. all right? So hopefully you're getting a, a good picture here of how to interpret these. Let's go ahead and do just a couple of the mathematics one. Um, I'm going to assume you can do kind of a straightforward read off the graph. Um, the answer to 1220, let me go ahead and write that down for you, is 80 grams. All right. So I'm going to let you make sure you can read that off the chart. Now the second one says how many grams would it take to saturate 300 grams of water at 50 degrees. So at 50 degrees, if you look at the chart, 50 degrees, go up to potassium nitrate, and it's 80 grams. If it's 80 grams per 100 grams of water, how much is it per 300 grams? So if you cross multiply, you're going to get 240 grams. Okay. Now the next one asks, how much will precipitate out? So I have a saturated solution of potassium nitrate. So I'm at 50 degrees. There's my saturated solution. And I have 80 grams at 50 degrees. How much would precipitate out if I lowered it to 10 degrees? So at 10 degrees, all that will dissolve is I'm going to estimate that to be about 22 grams. That last digit's uncertain, so don't get hung up if we're off a little bit. So if this is at 50 degrees and this is at 10 degrees Celsius, then all of the difference is going to precipitate out. So about 58 grams of precipitate would end up on the bottom of my beaker. So that is a second type of problem. And let's take a look at another one here. All right. So now we want to find out to what minimum temperature. So this is a little bit of a backwards one from what we did before. And um, we're going to use... 445 grams of sodium nitrate instead. 445 grams. I don't know why I did that, but I think it ends up being off the chart or something. 445 grams per 500 grams of water. We want to know how many grams would saturate 100. And then we can figure out at which temperature that is. So if you do some quick little algebra and solve for that, I got approximately 89 grams. So I'm going to go to 89 grams, very close to 90. I'm going to go over to sodium nitrate, which is right here. And if I drop that down in temperature, I see that that's going to be at about 22 degrees Celsius. All right.
Not sure why I changed that number, but go ahead and change that number to 445. It might have might have been off the chart. I'm not sure. Okay, so hopefully you get um, the idea there. This is just another one that's a proportionality. Graph it. Is it above the line or is it a below the line or on the line? And if you graph this, make sure you see that this is super um, 1224. It's actually, I came up with super saturated. Let's double check this one because it just says saturated or unsaturated here. So I have 400 grams of water and 40 grams of potassium chlorate. The question is how many would saturate 100 grams? Hopefully you see that it would be 10 grams of potassium chlorite. So I'm going to go to 20 degrees up to 10 grams and indeed I see that it is super saturated. Okay, so all right, I'm going to do one more. Um, 25, I think, is a good one. And that's how much would precipitate. So if I have 100 grams of water, and I have a saturated potassium chloride solution, and I cooled it from 80 degrees to 10 degrees, how many would precipitate out of the solution? Um, we actually did one like that. That was just like 1022. So if you will take a look at that, you should get 20 grams. Okay, so we're going to go from potassium chloride at 80 degrees, which is right there at 50. We're going to go down to 10 degrees, and that's 30. So the difference is, that difference is the amount that will precipitate out and that difference is 20 grams. All right, so I think, I hope you have the general idea of how to interpret these. So until I see you in class, this is signing off. Take care, kiddos. Love ya.